All right, it is a chilly April day down here at our Florida condo, Perdido, Florida. We had a big front come through a couple days ago. Severe weather in South Louisiana, severe weather here. We got down here yesterday, came and walked on the beach. Wind was blowing 30 plus, just insanely windy. Got sandblasted. We came out here to scout, try and find a place to fish this morning. Found a little area that looks promising. I'm heading to it now. Getting a little bit of a late start. I'm normally out here earlier, but it was so chilly this morning. I'm all dressed in like winter clothes. Got a sweatshirt on and joggers. Definitely not typical beach attire. But I'm heading down to the area that, that looked good to me yesterday. Let's see if I can catch anything. Water was super dirty yesterday. Dirtiest I've ever seen it by far. It's looking a little bit better today. Definitely not beautiful water like you normally see here. So we'll see if that affects the fish. Probably will. But I'm here for a few days. I'm gonna be doing all kinds of fishing. So come along with me. Let's see what we can catch. All right, this is the area I wanted to fish. It looked good to me yesterday. Water looks like absolute gravy. Just bad. So I'm gonna start with this Limbo Slice Matrix Shad. I got that on a 3 8 ounce Death Grip Jig Head, which is a little bit heavy. For the surf i generally don't fish anything that heavy but the currents are really swift as a result of all that wind i'm definitely gonna have to wade into this water <laughs> which is undesirable because as i mentioned it's cold oh man this water is frosty Whew. my feet will adjust but right now it's cold surf fishing here can be absolutely fantastic got to do your homework the day before find a good area to fish but i don't think it's gonna be fantastic today we'll see we got other options if this doesn't work out all right it's a bad sign i've made several casts and they've all come back looking like this that storm obviously blew a lot of nasty grass up to the beach i've seen that happen before it just becomes unfishable a lot of times it's sargassum that's not what this is. I don't know what it is, but it's thick. Yeah, I'm fouled again. You can just tell. All right, I'm not a cagey surf veteran, but I've done this enough to know when it's going to happen and when it's not. And today it's just not. Conditions are horrible. Water's filthy, super rough. And there's all this grass in the water. So I'm a punt on this. This would just be a waste of time. I'm going to go fish on the back dock behind our condo and see if we can catch some whiting or croakers or redfish or something else. And the good thing with that is I'll get some fish to bait my crab traps. So let's go do that. All right, punted on the surf, came back to our dock behind our unit. That's our complex right there. Let's see if I can catch some whiting stuff that'll bite bait shrimp. Got some bait shrimp right here. I've done this before, had really good success back here, and it's April, it's a good time of year for this. Let's see what we can catch. Our shrimp are frozen, but they're in the process of defrosting. All right. I tied some double drop rigs onto my rods. Normally I throw this on spinning gear. Ow, this looks so sharp. But our unit's being painted, and so I can't get into my owner's closet because it's all covered up. So I had to rig them on my bait casters, which I brought from home. Water back here is gorgeous. Doesn't look anything like the surf. All right, cast number one. Usually I just kind of let these set, but sometimes the fish are thick down there and you don't have time to even let them set. All right, there's one. Let's see what we got. Hopefully it's a whiting. Feels pretty decent. Definitely feels pretty decent. Yeah, really good whiting. Really good one. All right. That's the target species. That's what we're here for. These things go crazy when you hook them. <laughs> Something I've definitely noticed. 
All right, that's a start. That's a really good fish. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. Oh sh All right, that was absolutely one of the stupidest things I've ever done in my entire fishing career. Normally when I come out here and do this, as I mentioned, I use those rods that are in my owner closet. They're like $30 rods combos. I mean, just complete garbage. Don't need good stuff to do this. So I don't mount them on anything. There's nowhere out here to even mount the rods. Just kind of leave them sitting there. Figure if I lose one, oh well, not that big of a deal. Not even thinking. I come out here with my $300 Akuma tournament concept, Akuma Akai, set them up the same way. I've never had a rod go over in the years that I've been doing this. And wouldn't you know it. Something big hit. I don't know. It was probably a redfish, maybe a black drum. I don't know what. Pulled it over. I watched it sail off. Made a few casts with my other rod, trying to grab it, hopefully trying to snag it. But man, I saw it heading out to sea. <sighs> Absolutely disgusted. Cannot believe I was so stupid. Just so mad at myself. Idiot. Freaking idiot. All right, a few months ago, Mrs. Marshman and I went on a nature hike just about a mile east of our condo. Beautiful area. We discovered a trail. It's full of deer tracks, believe it or not. Lots of deer here on Perdido Key. But the trail crossed really, really close to a beautiful fishing area covered in shoal grass. Looked really, really productive but we came it was like January like not the time you want to go wait fish something like that but I followed away in the memory bank knowing I'd come back in April and May this is my first journey here loaded with top waters also soft deans gonna see if I can catch a big trophy size speckled trout or anything anything I can get to bite so let's see what happens here all right here it is <laughs> You can tell it's just absolutely beautiful. Just a spectacular morning. Sun's about to poke up over the horizon. But look at this beautiful treasure that we found. This is just awesome. Water looks perfect. Really pretty. There's a point off over this way. I kind of migrate toward it. I'm going to hide one of these rods. I think I'm gonna throw top water first. Got this matrix mullet all beat to hell the way I like them. Got all my wading gear on. I got all this since my trip in December to Port Mansfield when I wore duck waders. <laughs> it was all I had. But now I got true proper fishing waders with wading boots. Water's real flat right here. I'm gonna wade out to a drop off. I know when I was here in January, there's tons of shoal grass out here. None right here, as you can tell at all. But we're gonna find it at some point. Tide looks a little dead. It is a big tide range day, so it's gonna move here. But it's not moving at the moment. I think I'm going to mostly throw that soft in today. But while it's early, got to give this topwater a few casts at least. 
and I can feel it through my waders. This water is chilly. <laughs> it's cold. It's probably, I'm betting around 60, 62, somewhere there. Not frigid, obviously, but chilly. Now, the negative to wade fishing, of course, is limited mobility. You're kind of locked into one particular area. So you've got to maximize your opportunities. You've got to find what the fish want. And when you do get bites, you really don't want to lose them. The benefit is you're super stealthy. Fish have no idea you're here. Okay, I walk back, switch rods. Got the one with the softine on it. Now, I'm far from a softine expert. Haven't fished them much, but did on my trip to Port Mansfield, Texas. And the one thing I absolutely learned on that trip is you gotta work the bait really, really quickly. Keep it just under the surface. You want it kind of breaching here and there. Kind of like that. Decided to put down the top water just because of how flat calm it is. There's a little bit of ripple. I feel more confidence in throwing that, but just too calm. If I was in a boat, I'd probably stick with it a little bit longer just because I could cover more water. Maybe find some feed and fish, but here you gotta, as I mentioned, you've got to find what they want. Can't waste time throwing something that's not exactly what they want. I am seeing a little bit of bait, but it's it's small bait, it's not big. I'd feel a lot better if I could find some mullet or pogies or something like that. Hopefully we'll run across some. There is a loon up ahead, but he, he looks like he's chilling. Looks like he's kind of on the hunt. Okay, I don't know how well you can see into the water, but that's that shoal grass. And that to me is where those fish are gonna be. That's definitely where the bait is the little bait. All right, I'm seeing that tide is just starting to move. It's heading right to left. Oh, there's a fish. There we go. It's a trout. It's not a trophy, but it is a trout. All right, some measure of success. I'm gonna use this boga just to avoid getting that hook in my hand. Well, maybe I won't. Go ahead, dude, get off. Go. Come on, get off. All right, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, obviously not a big fish, but just such a beautiful scene here in the water with this soft ean, just so awesome. Success. See you later, big boy. All right. He clocked it. I thought he was a bigger fish when he hit. And we were standing in the middle of a big patch of, patch of shoal grass. So that's where you think that fish would be. Shout out to my buddy, Chris Bush. I know a limited amount about wade fishing, not much at all. But what I do know, I learned from him. And Chris has been deployed. He's in the Air Force. Either he's already overseas or he's close to going. By the time you watch this, he probably will be gone because I know it's any day now. So Godspeed getting home, Chris. Thinking about you, buddy. One thing I really like about this softine is how hard they hit it. It's just, it's just a fun bait to fish. You know, I throw a lot of crankbaits for specks, reds, anything else in the marsh. And it's a real similar bite. Nothing, 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 then boom. Like a ton of bricks dropped on your bait. All right, all I'm doing is moving 10 or 15 feet and then fan casting. I made a bunch of casts after I caught that fish Hoping there might be a little school there, but he was a lone ranger. And that's typically what I've found here. I've not done, really, I've not done any weight fishing like this. This is the first time. But I have fished in a kayak, in a boat, 
a limited amount and it's usually one hit wonders. You can catch some absolute giants back here. Absolutely, some really, really big fish. That's what I'm hoping happens today, but I'm already ecstatic just to have that, that one trout. When you're bank bound, you gotta manage your expectations. That's what makes it fun. Ooh, one swirled on me. Ooh, he's still behind it. Might be a red. Oh goodness, he didn't hit it. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> that made my heart stop. That made my heart stop. I think that's probably a redfish if I had to guess. Could be a big trout, you never know. He just wouldn't commit. Swirled at it twice. Ooh, there's some bait. There's some bait. Something just hit it. Probably spooked at that same fish. Because you know he didn't stay right in that area. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, there's the bait. There's the bait. It's still there. Lots of bait. That's, I, I suspect that's mullet. Perfect. Now, though I wouldn't mind at all catching a redfish, I definitely don't want to catch a giant because I can't chase him. When that fish swirled at me, I kind of just instinctively stopped the bait. Probably not the smartest thing. Probably should have picked up the pace. But you never know. How close this loon's coming to me? That would never happen in a boat. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of gradually working my way toward that point. It's pretty far. I'm just moving 10 to 15 feet at a time, typically, but I've just come across this area that's devoid of that grass. So I'm speeding through here until I can find some more. I really think that's essential to getting bit. All right, here we go. Another big patch. Let's see if there's any fish here. I've also noticed it's getting a lot deeper, very close to the shoreline here. That's a good sign. Definitely like fishing depth changes. All right, I reached the point that I wanted to reach. It's right here. The shoreline kind of goes back this way from this straight line here. Covered a lot of water, made a lot of casts. Nothing else on this soft bean, so I feel like I really probably need to change it. Not sure if that's the issue or if it's just I'm not running across a ton of fish. Did see that good school of bait. Glad to see that. Had something really big kind of swirl on me twice, but not commit. So since then, haven't really gotten anything to speak of. So I really think I need to change my bait. So let me go ahead and do that. Be back in it. Just a jiff. All right, I settled on a Shrimp Creole Matrix Shad on a 1 8 ounce Death Grip Jig Head. I'm kind of throwing in the towel on the big fish. Not that you couldn't catch a big fish on this, you definitely could. But I'm just going for bites now. And this definitely gives me the best chance of just getting bit. I'm gonna fish this definitely a little bit lower in the water column, but try and keep it above that top of that grass. We had a tiny little breeze starting to blow know, about 30 minutes ago, but it has died. It is just dead slick. Just a beautiful day. Definitely getting a little warm. It was super, not super chilly this morning. It was probably about 60 when I got out of my truck. Cool, definitely cool. Beautiful. There's some glass minnows here. That's probably what I was seeing, those glass minnows. I'm kind of migrating back toward where I started. Right now I'm in a big dead area, no grass. Just kind of taking my time getting through it. Looking for the next big patch. I'm 
Okay, my bait spooked a bunch of bait, and it actually is mullet. It came swimming right at me, saw me, and split. Definitely good to see. There is some bait here. I definitely plan to do a whole lot more wade fishing here in the next few months. There's an area to the east called Johnson Beach. I've never explored it at all, but back behind the island looks really good for wade fishing, just based on satellite views. And as I mentioned, you kind of measure success differently when you're wade fishing. Like I'm thrilled to have caught one fish, thrilled. It's just some validation. Kind of build on it for next time. Figure some things out. Here comes some bait heading right toward me. Nothing's messing with it. <laughs> you know, I see something explode in it. But I've seen many times where speckled trout will just follow bait. Just follow it. I guess they want to have the option. If hunger pangs hit. Now I'm kind of standing here with the sun on my back. I'm seeing a good amount of glass minnows in this water. More than I thought were here when I was walking toward the sun. Just couldn't see into the water as well. A lot of bait in here, for sure. There's definitely some predators. Got to be. Over across the way, you can see what's called Ono Island. Million dollar homes, multi-million dollar homes on Ono. And I know a lot of those people catch speckled trout off their docks at night. Over or under lights. We've got a light at the end of our dock. A green light tracks trout many, many nights. I don't really fish them. Just not my thing. I like finding fish a lot more than I like catching fish. It's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. Just not all that exciting to me. But, I mean, some people like it. People don't get to fish a whole lot. Definitely enjoy just catching fish. I get it. This, to me, is way more enjoyable. Obviously, the number of bites is way less but each one means a lot more, that's for sure. All right, I migrated back up to this beach where I started. It's kind of the end of the line for me. Still just absolutely flat slick, as you can tell, just a beautiful day. Probably hurt me a little bit. Obviously you want a little bit of wind, ruffle that surface, make the fish more eager to feed. They see everything really well when that surface is flat. And you don't want them to see everything too well because obviously you're trying to get them to hit a plastic bait. <laughs> it's not exactly natural, but super fun. Really enjoyed it. Learned a lot. Certainly will be back. Now I'm going to head back to the condo. Go check my crab trap. Put a crab trap off the end of the dock. See if I got any crabs. And if I do, I'm going to boil them up and eat them for lunch. All right. Be back in a minute. All right, back at the condo, Miss Marshman and I are gonna go check the crab trap, see if we have any lunch. <laughs> we do have a backup, so we don't need many crabs, just kind of a supplement, but hopefully we catch at least a couple, we'll see. All right, I see at least two. We got three, there we go, four. Actually, we got four, that's good. That's a good haul. All right, so we'll get to eat these for lunch. And they're actually pretty nice. That's really good. All right, now I'm in the kitchen here at our condo. So I boil crabs here a fair amount, but I don't generally have all the supplies, all the seasoning and stuff that I typically use when I boil crabs at home. Really don't need it. I mean, crabs are so good anyway, but let me show you what I do have. All right, very simple. We've got onion powder. We've got a jar of crab boil. That's Zatarain's crab boil. Uh, I poured some out from home and I just store it here in the owner's closet. And then we've got salt. That's it. Oh, and I've got my crabs in a pot covered in ice in the fridge. The purpose of that is so that the crabs keep their claws. If you've ever boiled crabs, you know, if you put them in a hot pot, hot water, and they're not refrigerated, they're not like chilled out, they're gonna shoot off their claws. But if you, if you get them nice and cold first, it doesn't kill them, but it does prevent them from shooting off their claws. Just an aesthetics type thing, doesn't matter. If they shoot off their claws, you can just eat the claws separately, whatever. But I like seeing a crab with its claws attached and eating it that way. Oh, and by the, by the way, the crabs we caught are really nice. Uh, so it's only a couple for each of us, but it's gonna be a nice supplement for lunch. Blue crabs are never bad, right? You always wanna have those with whatever meal you're having. 
Crab makes absolutely everything better. All right, I just turned our pot on, got it on high. Maybe all the seeds filled with water. Not filled, about half filled. We only have four crabs. So I'm going to go ahead and add some salt. And this is really just to taste. I just kind of add what I think is right, and then I taste it and see if it is right. You want it to be just on the salty side of good. You don't want it to be, if it tastes good to you, it's probably not salty enough. You're going to have to add a little more salt. Now, you can't overdo it, of course, and make them too salty, and that's not good. Technically, blue crab, if you cooked it in just water, it would be good because the meat is just so good. But obviously, you enhance it by adding salt in the, in the seasoning. I don't think we're salty enough, but I'm going to taste it just to make sure. All right, definitely needs a little more, but not a ton more. Then we add just a little bit of crab oil. Maybe like a tablespoon or so, maybe a little more than that. And I really, really prefer the liquid crab oil to the powder. I just think it tastes a lot better. Whew, yeah, it tastes really good. Whew. By good, I mean over salty and perfectly seasoned. All right, my onion powder has been stuck in the owner's closet for a while, so it's, it's in pretty bad shape. This isn't even necessary. Just kind of a nice addition. I often do this just with the salt and the crab oil, and that's really, really fine. At home, I'll typically add whole onions, cut up, of course, garlic, celery, bay leaf, sometimes lemons, host of other things to the boil, but when you're here at the condo, you may do it what you got. All right, that's good. Just need to bring that to a boil. All right, here we go. Our water's boiling. So now we just got to throw the crabs in. They haven't been in here terribly long, but they should be cold enough to be docile. Yeah, they seem to be, so should hold on to the claws. Here we go, crab number one. All right, we got them all in. We're gonna go ahead and cover it and let it return to a boil. And then we'll boil them for about five minutes. That's it. Cut it off and we'll let them soak about 20, 25 minutes and then we'll be having a feast. All right, that smoke usually means it's boiling again. And it is, as you can see. So we'll let that go five minutes and then we'll shut off the fire. All right, our five minutes is up. Go ahead and turn off the fire. And I'll probably, this is electric here, so I'm probably just gonna go ahead and move them off so they don't stay over the heat. There we go. I'm also gonna throw a little ice in there just to cool off that water a little bit. That helps them to soak up the flavor. All right, it's been 25 minutes. Our crabs are done soaking. Go ahead and take them out. They held onto their claws. Figured they would. So a little crab tip, if you don't know it. If you're eating crabs, you always want to reach for the ones that have dirty shells like this one. Typically, that's a sign that the crab has been in its shell a while, so it should be nice and full. This crab, you see it's a lot whiter, almost kind of blue. That's an indication it's probably a little bit lighter crab. We got two legit what we call number ones, number one crabs, two really big ones. I'm gonna bring these out to Mrs. Marshman, but I gotta grab a couple of butter knives first. Just eating out on the balcony today, it's a beautiful day. Low 70s, just spectacular out here. All right, here we go, plate full of crabs on a beautiful day. We're gonna feast on them. Big. They will be delicious. Good. Yes, they are very big.
All right, like a fat girl who's offered another piece of cake. I just cannot say no. Last morning here in Florida, I've come back to where I fished yesterday. This flat, beautiful sunrise about to occur. Just gotta see if I can improve on what I found yesterday. Hopefully this tide moves better today. It didn't move much at all yesterday. Went out to my dock yesterday afternoon and it was flying. Nothing like that yesterday morning. I mean, if you squinted, it kind of looked like it was falling a little bit. But hopefully today's a different story. Already seen some bait out here, so hopefully we can catch a fish or two. All right, yesterday I started with top water. We got the same condition this morning as far as calmness, obviously. Not a whole lot of ripple on the surface, so in fact, no ripple. So I'm going to go with a Miradine, Softine. Just a slightly different color than yesterday. This one's got some flake in it, which I'm hoping will produce with this sun once it comes up. I kind of figured out yesterday where the bulk of this shoal grass is. It's much more in this direction, so that's where I'm heading. All right, we got sunrise. Maybe that'll kind of inspire this wind to start blowing. Move some air currents around. That would definitely help us. Ooh, all right. That was definitely a game fish. There we go. Don't know what it was, but something destroyed. Oh, goodness. Oh, there he is. There he is. I think I know what that is. <laughs> it could be a big trout, but I think it's a redfish. So awesome. Fighting this fish while standing in the water. Just so cool. Look at that, look at that. He gave himself away. He hasn't come up at all, so it's gotta be a red. Obviously, I hope I land this fish, but at this point, I don't even care. It's just very cool hooking this fish. While standing in the water, here in the Florida Panhandle. Love it. Just love it. Can't tell for sure, but I'm definitely getting hints of redfish. Yep, 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 yep. He's a keeper red too. Just a beautiful fish, just beautiful in this clear water. Yeah, he's a good fish, good red. With all those trebles, I'm just gonna wait till he exhausts himself. I got to. I don't wanna risk getting one of those in my hand or worse, <laughs> my crotch. Come on, dude. I know, I know. All right, we got him. We got him. There we go. That's not a bad red. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. That is a beautiful red fish. I mean, if I was keeping fish, I'd keep this dude. He'd be good to eat. About 23, I'm going to say, 23 inches. Yeah, I know, buddy. Not the way you wanted to start your day. I get it. I get it. All right, we got the bait out. You're going to be okay. All right, we have to take some time to revive this dude. Well, there he goes. Didn't take long at all. There he goes. Look at him. He's in good shape. All right, glad to see it. Just so awesome. Can't tell you how excited I am to catch that fish. There's just something special about wade fishing. I really I understand why so many people are addicted to it. It's just awesome. You're so stealthy and so quiet out here. Beautiful morning, incredible setting. Sun just coming up. Now, the only negative, of course, redfish are softing wreckers.
and he had his way with this one. Looks like I got it mostly repaired. Should be okay. All right, now that I can see a little bit, it's looking like the tide is probably moving a little bit better than it was yesterday morning. Definitely good to see. I have a feeling I'm going to be spending a lot of this summer weed fishing this area. So many areas to do this in. Just lots and lots of options. I'm just now scratching the surface. That's it. Historically, we've only had this condo three years, but I've done most of my fishing here in the surf. I've had really, really good success. I didn't on this trip. I just couldn't find a really good trough. Normally, I, I find them within walking distance of my condo, and this time I just could not. The condition just really weren't good for it. So I couldn't get a bite, but that'll change, of course. We'll do better in the rest of the summer, but it's gonna be hard not to do this every time I come. And of course, I'm wearing waders today because it's mid-April. But as the season moves along, you just wait out of here. Won't need the waders. Probably sweat to death. You wore waders. And I gotta figure if I do this enough, I'll run across a really big trout sooner or later. Just gotta happen. And it may have been a trout that boiled on me a couple times yesterday. I think it was probably a red. But it could have been a trout. And today would have been a great day to kayak fish back here with as calm as it is. I just kind of had this on the brain, just really wanted to do this. Of course, you know, with a kayak, you can cover more ground. Not as much as a boat, but a whole lot more than weight fishing. Kind of a stealth compromise between a boat and weight fishing. Biggest trout I've ever caught back here. This is called Old River, by the way. It's really a bay, but it's called Old River. Biggest trout I ever caught back here is 22 inches, which, you know, obviously, admittedly, is not a... Not a giant. I've had some blow ups from fish that I know are significantly bigger than that, but no connections. My buddy Chad Champagne, the owner of Matrix Shad, has done a lot of fishing back here. And he's caught a bunch of seven pounders. And a friend of his caught a nine pounder back here, 30 inch fish. They're here for sure. Got to make a lot of casts to get to them, but I don't mind that. I like working for fish. I really do. I enjoy it. And you know, those big fish are definitely loners. So if you're getting bites from little fish, more than likely there's not any big ones around there. Could be, but big fish will just shock you on a day like today, just out of the blue. Oh, look at that. That's something. That's something. Is that a school of reds? What is that? What is that? That might be a shark. There's something rocketing through here. That's probably a shark. <laughs> Nothing I want to tangle with, for sure. Yeah, reds don't move that quickly for that long. Now, we do rent out our condo. It's in Perdido, Florida. Two bedrooms, two baths, sleep six. If you got any interest, I've got a link in the video description. Great, great, great location. Just absolutely love this area for the fishing and everything else. Excellent food, close to the Floribama. Great beaches. Where we are, the beach is really quiet. In some areas where it's it's pretty crowded. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. There's one of those rays. I don't know if it's a bat ray or what it is, some kind of ray. He's just cruising along. The ones that flap their wings. Ooh, ooh, something boiled on me. Oh, I missed it. Shoot. Give him another chance, but typically, <laughs> once they turn away, they're like, eh, eh, I don't want that. He took an enthusiastic swipe at it. Thought we were gonna get him, whatever he was. All right, unfortunately, it's almost 8 o'clock, and we're heading home today, so i got to get back and pick up. I promised Mrs. Marshman I wouldn't fish alone, so i got to live up to that. She's got a meeting she's got to make it home for, so we have to call it a day, I think.
but I'm definitely gonna fish my way back. So hopefully here the lighting's good enough you can see this submerged shoal grass. You got these bare areas like this with nothing. And you come up on these big patches of shoal grass. Tons more bait over the grass, <laughs> understandably. Gives them a lot more area to hide out in. But of course, the predators know that, so that's where they go hunting when they're feeding. They go look in all this underwater grass. All right, I'm gonna run through my setup since I know a lot of people are curious about that. I've got an Akuma tournament concept rod. This is a medium power rod. It's the one that is rated for crankbaits and jerk baits. The reel is an Akuma Akai. Love this reel. It's my favorite. I've got it on almost all my rods. And spooled on here, I got 30 pound braid. It's the real thin braid. Cast it super far. Now I'm one of these guys who really believes that braid is highly visible, particularly in this bathtub water. I mean, what we're fishing today is, it's a bottle of gin. Like it's that clear. I would never tie directly to my bait with this braid. So I have about a six foot, eh, five foot, 15 pound fluoro leader. Now there's a big debate. A lot of people are starting to claim that it's not necessarily the type of line that you fish, but the diameter of the line that's most important. I'm not one of those guys. I'm still a visibility guy. I really feel very confident with fluoro in gene clear water like this. If I couldn't get my hands on some fluoro, I would my backup would be mono. Wouldn't like that as much. Now mono is more forgiving in a lot of regards than fluoro. Got to tie specific knots with fluoro, but still, it's to me, it's the better choice. You're gonna get more bites, I think, fishing that fluoro. And 15 pound test, you know, I could definitely get in trouble if I hooked a big 30 pound red or something while standing in the water, but generally, I'm gonna be able to subdue the fish with this, with this outfit. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Just a great few days down here along the Florida coast, with the exception of losing one of my rods. Still upset about that, but can't cry over spilt milk. Nothing I can do about it at this point. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos YouTube thinks you'll like. Check those out if you have time. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh or here at the beach, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson. <laughs>